Okay, I guess we can start. Hello everyone, thanks a lot for sticking right before lunch. Uh, my name is Radu and today we're going to talk about Brigade. Uh, you can find me on the internet, on probably most actively on GitHub. Uh, I'm a piano enthusiast, I really like to learn to play the piano. My neighbors probably disagree with me on that. Uh, I'm a maintainer for a bunch of open source projects, Brigade, the cloud native application bundles, Draft, and other open source projects. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. And uh, yeah, we're here to talk about Brigade and event-driven scripting for Kubernetes. But before we get into that, uh, let's start with a simple definition for what an operating system is. So it's simply a program that after you load it, it manages all of the other programs that are running on the machine, right? So one analogy that really helped me when I was getting started with Kubernetes, when I tried to understand how it operates, was that of a cloud operating system. Right? Don't take it way too far, the analogy, but for, for a simple reasoning, it holds, right? An operating system manages the application, the processes on a single machine, while Kubernetes manages containers on a cluster of machines. Right? So taking the analogy a step further, then think about operating system shell scripting. Think about Bash, PowerShell, or any other scripting environment that you use on an operating system. What that does, it's simply flow control that wraps the execution of some processes, but doesn't have an opinion on what the process is actually running, right? or what it's supposed to do, or how it's supposed to run. So think about this simple example. Uh, because we have a real program language bash in this scenario, we're able to start processes like ls, echo, start processes, listen for them, loop over the results, wait for it to finish, get the result of the first process, which is list, and pass it as argument for the next process, right? And using bash, we're able to actually put together some really interesting flow of programs, right? So taking the analogy to, the, to Kubernetes as an operating system, what would a, a cluster shell scripting look like, right? So we take the same definition and we try to substitute processes with containers. So a cluster shell scripting environment would allow me to have flow control that wraps the execution of containers, of Kubernetes pods, but is not opinionated on how they're supposed to run on, or what they're supposed to do once they start. So, I would like to do something like this, right? For each result in the execution of one pod of a container, I want to get that result, I want to loop over it. If the exit code for that is success or is failure, I want to do something else, I want to do something else, right? I want to pass some storage, a persistent volume from one and also use it in a, in a different scenario. So I want to do things that I would normally do in a scripting environment, but in Kubernetes. And the main question is, how do people do that today? And what I've seen, at least, is one is executing shell scripts in BusyBox, or executing shell scripts when they, where they do cube control exec, they wait for that to finish, they do some grep, and then search for some strings that they want to pass over. That is not maintainable. That is not testable. And we want something else, right? And this is where Brigade comes in. So what is Brigade? First of all, it's a CNCF project. We're really happy to be a CNCF uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation sandbox project. And essentially, it's a framework for event-driven scripting on Kubernetes. And we'll, over this talk, we'll try to get to each part of that, of that definition. Uh, it ex it's extremely lightweight, and it's built on Kubernetes. It's actually a Kubernetes application. It, it's made of deployments and services, right? So, if you're already running applications on Kubernetes right now, Brigade is just another application. And ultimately, it allows us to chain together containers to create workflows for our processes. So think again about this scenario, and let's think about, let's imagine how a cluster shell scripting environment would look like. Uh, the first question is, well, we need a programming language, right? Because uh, if anyone, I said it before, if anyone tried to write a uh, for loop in YAML, that's not ideal, right? You want to actually have a real programming language where you can loop and for and actually reason about the thing that you're executing. Second, 
how do we share data between the containers that we're starting, right? We are on Kubernetes, so we kind of have an idea about how we should do that, and we, I think we wanna maintain that expectation. And ultimately, when are we supposed to actually start the scripts? What should trigger them? So, first of all, choose a language, don't write one. People in our team would be absolutely delighted if we got to actually write our own programming language, right? Not always ideal, right? It's better to choose an existing language that's first of all popular, has adoption, and most importantly, has a low barrier of entry. The reason for this entire conference is to help people get started with Kubernetes more easily, right? So we kind of look at the most popular programming languages of the last five years, and without a doubt, the most popular one is JavaScript, right? Uh, it's, it's the programming language that's arguably the easiest to get started with, and is really one of the most popular programming languages out there. Second of all, it has a rich, very rich ecosystem. And by ecosystem, I mean lenders, unit framework, uh, unit testing frameworks, it has type checking with TypeScript, and it has a lot of NPM packages. And at the end, it's extremely flexible. We want to make it easy for new users to get started, right? But at the same time, we want to be able to uh, configure our workflow, our pipelines, as much as possible, right? For experienced Kubernetes users, we want to have the same flexibility in setting everything that we want in, in a Kubernetes manifest in a pipeline like this. And if you don't believe me when I say it's really popular, there are a billion weekly NPM downloads for JavaScript packages. Now, yeah, some of them are CI, are automated systems, but there are a few, at least five million actual humans doing NPM install every week. So we could possibly reach a, a portion of those with Kubernetes and Brigade. The second one is how do we, start, how do we share data between containers, right? We want to re, uh, pass information to containers and want to read data from that. And since we chose JavaScript, first of all, we want to be to feel like, it, like we're actually writing JavaScript. And more importantly, we want to preserve the existing, if you're used to passing data in some way in Kubernetes, if it's secrets or environment variables, uh, persistent volume claims or uh, temporary file systems, we want you to be able to keep doing that. And at the end of the day, it's just JavaScript, right? This is how you would start a job called one using a container, uh, using the image Alpine. You can substitute Alpine there with any existing container image out there that you have access to pull. You write a, a list of tasks that you want to execute inside that pod, that container. You have environment storage caches that you can attach and configure. And ultimately, you run it. We want it to be as easy as possible for new users, right? And that's ultimately what it takes. And the final question is, when do we actually get to execute the scripts that we're writing, that we're defining? And what we've seen over the last decade, one with event-driven development and two with the serverless movement, is that people like events, right? They have multiple systems and essentially they talk with each other through events. And what we envision with Brigade is that event handlers ultimately become the entry points for executing the script. So where do these events come from, right? They can be any sort of HTTP webhook. They can be from an internal system. They can be from any third party uh, system that might want to give uh, information back to you. Uh, they could be Git events. They can be container registry events. They could be even Kubernetes events, events that Kubernetes internally generates. You can react to those as well. And eventually, any event source that can be configured you can do it with Brigade. It's a component called Gateway, and it's fairly easy to uh, get any event and create Kubernetes jobs with that event. You can write Kafka uh, gateways, you can write Redis PubSub uh, gateways, and essentially any messaging system that you use right now, potentially you can convert those events to Brigade. And this is a complete Brigade script, right? The only thing uh, on top of uh, defining and running the job is we say that whenever some event happens, some event triggers, I want to execute this and I simply pass some the data that the event gives me back. 
Uh, this is the, uh, the library that we use. You can simply import it, and that's, that's a complete Brigade script. And this line is, you, you can skip that as well, right? So it's five, four or five lines of, of code. What do people use Brigade for? The first one and the thing that comes to people's minds the first is CI CD and we actually use CI, we use Brigade to build, test and release Brigade itself. Uh, but besides actually using Brigade directly to, uh, for CI, which again, we have GitHub integrations that I'm gonna show you in a minute, people actually use it as a foundation for their own opinionated CI systems. Right, you want, and I'm gonna give you an example for that in a minute. I actually have someone in the room who's building one of those. One really interesting one that we haven't thought of when building Brigade is application security scannings. Every night they, uh, they take all the applications in a certain namespace, they do vulnerability checkings for those applications. If uh, they discover vulnerabilities, they stop the traffic to that. If not, if the vulnerability is still there, they potentially can create, uh, I don't know, um, send emails and Slack notifications, something to someone who needs to react. And essentially, because you have a full programming language, you can use any API inside any container that you want. Another one is aggregating and analyzing data from multiple event sources. You have one storage account in cloud A, you got a storage bucket in cloud B, and you have an on-prem MySQL. What's a sane way of getting data consistently and programmatically from all those and putting it in a report, right? You need to have access to all of those and this is a very interesting way you can use Brigade for. And one really interesting that it's coming to the Brigade documentation, someone from the community actually is, is writing that right now, is spinning up preview environments for uh, every pull request on demand. So imagine you have a repo, whenever you want to prepare or there's a pull request that you want to merge, there's a namespace that gets created, everything gets deployed there, you kind of get a canary of 10% of traffic, let's say, and that goes there. If everything goes well, you can increase it, right? And you can do that from Brigade without, um, but potentially integrating with a service mesh if you want, but you can just test the namespace. If it's everything okay, you can merge the pull request and that's it. So think about Brigade not only as a, a step for CI CD, but potentially a way to automate any processes that you might have running in your Kubernetes cluster, right? So let's see how we can actually get started with Brigade. Uh, you can install Brigade using Helm. There's one command, Helm install, and then uh, you can use the Brigade CLI called Brig it can get from the release pages from GitHub and actually interact with, with the entire system. So the only thing that I did before this talk, because I really do not trust uh, the Wi-Fi here to actually pull images and install things in my cluster, is I did the Helm install and I created the project. And if, you're, uh, if you use VS Code and you haven't seen the VS Code Kubernetes extension, I recommend you have a look at it. It's a, it's a thing that allows you to see the state of your cluster and interact with it, exec into containers, get the logs, follow the logs. There was a talk that I recommend you watch online from Ivan from our team, who's building this. Yeah, check it out. So essentially in, in this namespace I deployed Brigade and I said it's lightweight. It's actually three containers, there are three pods that are running and only one of those is actually mandatory. The other two are, are an API and a web dashboard that are nice to have. There's a Brigade controller, which is simply a Kubernetes controller that uh, is listening for events and scheduling things to start. So this is the controller, the API, and, uh, and, the, uh, and the web dashboard. So I, I told, I've been telling you that you simply write JavaScript and then you run it. Let's actually do that. So this is, this is a, simple, uh, a simple script that only does echo hello and then echo Barcelona. It's, it's intended to show you how easy things can be, so how can we run that? I, I've told you that uh, there, whenever there's an event triggered, there's a job that gets started. Right now we're simulating events with Brig, right? There's, uh, this script is listening for an event called exec. Whenever anyone creates a, uh, 
that's authenticated creates an event called exec, this, will gonna, this is gonna get started. And with Brig, I'm doing exactly that. Brig exec, the name of the project is hello kubecon, and I'm just passing the, the file that I wanna execute. Now what's happening here, the controller sees there's a new event, and we'll start scheduling the, uh, the, jo the job. Uh, Brigade also comes with a web dashboard. So if you don't really like to look at uh, CLIs, there's a command called Brig Dashboard that opens up uh, a web dashboard for you where you can see all of your projects and all of the events that got generated. So we can see that we created an event through the Brigade CLI. And if you go further, we can see the event and then we can see the actual logs. So the script itself was called do nothing. It was based on an Alpine image because it's the smallest things that, that I trust to run on this thing. And then it's gonna do echo hello and echo Barcelona. So at this point I can see in the dashboard the things that have happened. Uh, but let's take steps a bit further. I can do that with a declarative thing, right? I could just say what I want to happen. Um, Let's have a look at running things either sequentially or wait for one another to finish. And this is where having a real programming language is really important. I can use the await async functionality in JavaScript to do, the, do just that. Because of the way we build the library, you're able to async await jobs to finish before starting things. Or you can group them. So those two implementations do the same thing, but they do them in different ways to show you that there are multiple ways you can do this, right? You can group them or you can await them. So, let's execute number four. And this is the point where I show you another tool that someone from the community built. It's called Brigade Term. And it's again, it's a dashboard for Brigade, but it's for your CLI. If you're not the web kind of person and you live in a terminal, there's a, there's a, a web terminal that you can see all the things that are running in your uh, Brigade, all the events, you can see all the jobs that were created. And more importantly, the thing that I really like about this, you can see the pipeline, how the thing started. You can see that their first J1 got created, it finished and then J2 started. And this is simply because we did an await for those things. So, and then you can uh, dive in into each of the jobs and can see what happened there. Now, let's take it a step further. I've been telling you that it's easy with Brigade to actually share storage across jobs and across multiple invocations of events. So, first one that I wanna show you is sharing a persistent volume, a temporary persistent volume between all the jobs of a single event. So what this is gonna do is gonna create three jobs. The first one is gonna uh, write hello in the file. The second one is gonna write world in the same file, the shared file. And then the third one is gonna actually print the thing that, that's in that file. And the only thing that I'm doing, by default you don't have that because if you're a new user you don't wanna know what the storage is. If, you, if you've used Kubernetes and know what a persistent volume is, just do a storage enabled and you're gonna have, you can configure where you wanna have your shared storage and by default it's in mount brigade share. And everything you create there is gonna get persisted across all the jobs in your, uh, in your, in your event invocation. When the event is over, that, job is, that, that persistent volume is deleted. You can choose to persist it somewhere else if you want, but this is what you get by default. So if we execute Number five, and we go back to brigade term. We see there's an event happening. We see there's a job called one. What's happening right now, the persistent volume gets created and it's gonna get attached to each of the jobs while they're starting. Jobs are simply Kubernetes pods, so we're able to attach things exactly like you would do in, in any Kubernetes uh, pod. So one, didn't do anything, it wrote hello in the file, two, wrote world in the file, and three, printed whatever was on that file. There are three separate pods that are, are running in the same namespace and they're using the same 
the, the same file. Depending on the storage class that you have in your cluster, you can have read write once, read write many. It's only a matter of how 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 the things the things that you can do with your persistent volume and with your storage class. And one other thing that I want to show you before moving over is the first storage that I showed you was across jobs of the same event. The second one, called the cache, it's persisted across the same type of jobs across multiple events, right? So you execute, uh, for example, a go build every time. If you have the same name for your job, in this, for the same project in the same namespace, if you attach the cache, then by default, Brigade will attach that persistent volume for you and it will make it available in Mount Brigade. You can configure where that is available as well. So let's run that. And for us to actually see what is happening, we should, uh, we should run it multiple times. So what this first job is doing is it's just outputting its ID in that file. We're going to create another event that it's also going to uh, output its ID there. And across multiple execution of the same event, the job gets the same cache. So let's see how that went. The cacher job wrote, that's the last one that it wrote. I executed it a couple of times before, so I'm going to do it again. Right. You can see that as, as we execute the same event over and over again, the same storage gets attached to the same job. So you can imagine the things that you can do having storage shared across jobs and across the same job on multiple events. And just to show you a, a bit of a tease for the deep dive session, you can do things like try catch. Because you're in a real programming language, you can try scheduling a job on Kubernetes and catch an exception if that failed. And you can actually continue and continue the execution and do something that you want to do in case of failure, do cleanup. Things that you cannot normally do in a declarative environment. So what we did, we did the Helm install and then we used the Brig CLI to schedule uh, jobs in our pipeline. Now, I, so far I've only used Brig, which is I, I simulated events coming from other places. Uh, when it comes to integration, we actually have a first class support for cloud events, which is a CNCF specification, which its goal is to standardize the way events are shared across multiple systems. So if you have a system, all storage, cloud storage providers use this, this thing. So if you, if you have an event that generates cloud events, you can get it by default whenever you install Brigade and handle those events. We have in, uh, first class integration with the GitHub Checks API, and I'm going to show you in a minute is exactly that, how you can go to the Checks API tab in GitHub and see logs from Brigade, jobs that are running on your cluster. You can see them in the Brigade uh, CLI. We have integrations with Prometheus for metrics and Virtual Kubelet to scale in the cloud if you don't have enough capacity locally. We have also support for arbitrary event data with a generic gateway. So if your system doesn't support cloud events and support some random JSON schema, we can handle that. As long as you know what you have in your JavaScript file, you can consume that as well. Uh, and ultimately, what, we wanna, what we're trying to build is a, is a rich ecosystem for Brigade. I've, I've shown you Kashti and Brigade term, which are dashboards to see the state of, of, of Brigade. But there are a number of gateways that are coming directly from the community. We have support for big bucket events, GitLab, Kubernetes, Azure Event Grid, Trello. When you move a board in Trello, that generates a webhook. You can handle that. Uh, and a number of, uh, of systems that generate events. And because we're developers and we actually love working with developers, Brigade also uh, loves developers. If you want to get started with this, docs.brigade.sh. And I want to give a shout out to Ronan, who's not here, who's building all of our awesome documentation and landing websites. And you can, ha you can see how to get started. You get an overview, get an advanced scripting guide, and essentially how to get started with, with Brigade. If you want to contribute, we'd absolutely love that. We have a, um, a label on GitHub, the good first issue. 
I would, all of us in the community would love to help you get started contributing to Brigade. Uh, and get involved. We have a Brigade channel in the Kubernetes Slack. Uh, we have a bi-weekly community meeting every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central European time, what was last night during KubeCon. And you can find most of the projects uh, in github.com Brigade Core organization. I want to tell you about the uh, deep dive tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have a look at more of a try-catch, object-oriented approach of writing jobs. Uh, Brigade internals, there's a Kubernetes controller in there somewhere. Uh, there's secrets, there's storage. We're going to see how that actually works. Uh, we're going to see how to build a custom gateway for your own events, right? If you have some event data in your, in your company that's generating some never seen before schema that's not HTTP, that's not JSON events, we're going to see how to get started with it. And we're also going to have a look at what's next for Brigade. It's tomorrow at 2.50 in 8.1 G2. If, if you search for Brigade, you're, you're going to find it. Questions? Yeah. Uh, that's usually one of the first questions that we get asked is how, how do you stack against, usually there's a CI system somewhere, Tectonic for example. Brigade is, doesn't intend to be a CI system only, right? We, uh, its goal is to be a, a shell scripting environment where you can, if you want to process a CI system, a CI process, yes, sure, you can do it. But there are a lot of other processes out there that you can start using. If, you're, if you only have a, a declarative need, if you only want to execute something, there's an event, you want to execute this, then you could probably get started with functions as a service probably, right? If you need something a bit more complex, if you want to handle logic, if you want to schedule multiple jobs and get results and share things between them, having the complexity of a real programming language is really helpful. Other questions? Whenever that happens, everything was either extremely clear or extremely unclear. I'm, I'm unclear on the outcome. <laughs> or a lunch. Uh, one more thing, we're actively looking into adding support for Windows containers. I have a branch that actually works with that. And if you're interested in having that this might be a good in, in example. And we also uh, are adding support for ARM as well, for running Brigade on ARM clusters. Thanks, everyone.